conceptual people talk about all of the elements. Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. Everybody is having an unbelievable weekend. I hope you've gotten it. You're off to a great start. I hope everything is going as close to plan as possible. Remember that things are going to happen. Sometimes you're in a place that you don't want to be, but if you're still breathing, you're still in the fight. I'm leaving the gym, and the, the, the ambient noise you hear is uh, my water container, and it has ice in it, so it's splashing around a little bit. But uh, I have a couple of things that I want to talk about, uh, and I'm going to start in on the ride to where I need to go, and then once I get uh, settled, I'm going to jump back in and finish this because I don't think I would be able to finish it in the time frame that I have, but I definitely want to get started while it's fresh on my mind. There are two dynamics at play. There are two dynamics at play that have been, to me, extremely destructive uh, to the efforts of Black America to make progress, especially socioeconomically, but also um, in a number of other different areas. And it is the pimp simp dynamic and the black girl magic dynamic. And I want to make sure I explain what I'm talking about because people love to misquote. People are looking for something to misunderstand. Um, and for those of you that are just intent on doing it, have at it. Uh, but I'm going to try to do what I can to make myself as clear as possible. I'm going to start with the pimp simp uh, dynamic. Uh, you got a lot of people, especially cats under the age of 40, and you got some 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 people 50, you know, st that, that'll use the term simp a lot. Uh, definitely cats under 40 use it a lot, but not without understanding the dynamic and the origin of the word. The, the, the term simp is a diametric uh, presentation or assessment of somebody as it pertains to a pimp. So when the pimp game was on the rise, and yes, pimps come in all shapes, sizes, and colors, and it's not just a black thing. I'm talking about specifically black culture and what we did with uh, the identity of the pimp, how we glamorized pimping, how we made it something to aspire to, how we looked up to pimps, how, I mean, we find them in our culture, in our music, in our poetry, and we don't understand where it came from. But when you look at it, when you so when you can, you know, you get someone and, and if they see somebody doing something and, and it is in some way elevating a woman, some way speaking to the strength of a woman or contributing to the strength of a woman or uh, a 
adoring a woman, uh, putting a woman in a light or on an equal level. Uh, the term simp simps out, you know, if you're loving on a woman. Now, there are some things that I don't advocate. I don't advocate being used. I don't advocate being a sucker. I don't advocate being played. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about knowing how to love, protect, and cover a woman is a responsibility of a man. That was something that was understood at one time. But then there arose this this thing of the pimp and the pimp was in the hood and the pimp was one of the few people you could see that had things that other people in the hood didn't have along with the dope dealer and some other organized crime things that was going on and and so you would see the pimp because you know you couldn't miss him in most instances now there was some that got out and did what they did and you didn't know but there was that, that was some glory in pimping you would see pimps show up at prize fights in the 70s pulling up in Rolls Royces and all of this stuff like that. And I'm pretty sure they had other enterprises going on, but the idea was they were looking like a pimp. It came to the point that the, when you dressed a certain way, people would say you were dressing like a pimp. Now, the flip side of that was pimps looked at cats that treated women on their level as simps because pimps looked at women as less than. Pimps looked at women as objects pimp looked at women pimps looked at women as a means and so and i've seen this up close as a kid i'm not gonna get into it now but i've seen this up very up close and personal as a kid and i saw the dynamic and i saw what it was and there is an entire uh level that's being missed in in it but what happened is the pimp became glorified. The pimp became an icon. The pimp became what you want to be. You, you don't want to be weak to a woman. You don't want to be uh, controlled by a woman. You don't want a woman pimping you. You don't want all these different things. So the way you do that is you control a woman. You mishandle a woman. You, 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 you find her weakness and you use that weakness to break her down. You break down her self-esteem. You break down and rearrange her self-concept. You get her to believe that she's less than what she is and then you reinforce that and then you handle her and do what you will with her and it comes in many shapes, forms, and, 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 and dynamics it is no longer just putting uh, a, a, a woman on the street uh, to sell her body we, we, we pimp it in a lot of different ways but when you see a brother that's holding a woman up when you see a brother that's speaking uh, power to a woman when you see a brother that's looking at a woman and saying I know you're going through some things I'm not I'm not praising your behavior I'm not celebrating your behavior but I'm understanding your path he's a simp and I personally don't have a problem with, with it because I understand what it is. If I've got to be one or the other, I choose a simp. I choose a simp because I understand what it means. Do I believe that I'm being played or that I'm a simpleton? Oh, no, not at all. I, I'm, I'm very aware of what's out there. I'm very aware of what's going on. Life is out there. And if you're going to actually be what you need to be, if you're going to actually be everything you need to be, you're going to have to put yourself at risk. That's in love, that's in money, that's in business, that's in anything. And when you start protecting yourself and everything is about protecting you, you start becoming a predator because it's all about you. And it's the way that you protect you is normally by attacking and being a predator and manipulative and controlling and, and, and all of these other things to other people. So you've got to understand that dynamic. And we have got to reverse this idea that there's some praise in pimping. Not pimping our women, not pimping our children, not pimping our families, not pimping our friendships. You can't grow in that. You can you can throw something together, you can get something out of it, but at, it, at some point it consumes you. Like any other thing where you're harming someone to get where you're going, it will eventually come back and consume you. It's the way God designed this universe to work. You don't have to believe it, but life will teach you. It's a bunch of people trying to figure out why life is going a certain way. It's because of some of the shit you did back in the day. It's some of the stuff you're thinking right now. But we've got to get that. Now on the flip side, I may be able to actually finish this. On the flip side of it is the black girl magic thing it's extra it's equally destructive and here's why 
on the surface, it sounds great. It sounds like it's celebrating this unbelievable strength that black women have, the things that black women are able to do. And if you look at it, man, black women, you got a lot of single parent black women. You got a lot of black women that have gone through a lot of things. You got a lot of black women who had to come out of homes where they suffered incest. This is reality. This isn't pumping up some air, air inflated story. This is the reality of it. We, we, we don't want to have these conversations. We don't want to talk about the elephant in the room. We don't want to talk about some of the dynamics that created the idea that I need to be a pimp and why it's so popular among men and, and, and that's going to be for another thing but 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 the thing is it's nothing wrong with saying hey I see you it's nothing wrong with saying I appreciate you it's nothing wrong with saying you have done an unbelievable job but when you start to praise it and you start to talk about the strong black woman what you're doing is saying, I see you operating in a capacity that's outside of your natural spectrum and it's exceptional and you're doing an unbelievable job. Keep up, keep it up. But that's not her greatest strength. Her greatest strength is to operate within the divine, uh, divine essence of her nature. And it's becoming quote unquote, unacceptable to do that and I'm not trying to put a woman in her place when I'm trying to say it normally when we talk a black about black girl magic it's about a black woman doing something she shouldn't have to be doing in the first place it's about her carrying a load she shouldn't have to carry alone it's about her overcoming some unbelievably crazy obstacle to do something that she should have had help doing in the first place and we celebrate it to the point that people are aspiring to it everybody wants their black girl magic story my thing is black women aren't magical they're mystical and they are highly spiritual and i don't mean that they don't do some extraordinary thing and you try to figure out what the hell and how the hell they did it black women are the the epitome of incubators you give them something they multiply it they are magnificent but they do so much more when you provide a covering when they are in their rightful place when they assume their femininity and don't see it as a weakness they see it as a strength that's nothing more powerful than a woman and her femininity and i don't mean being played being manipulated being manhandled being controlled being that's not femininity that's weakness Femininity is understanding how you move, understanding where your essence and your strength is, understanding that when you're moving in your true femininity and you find a man that's operating in his true masculinity, you don't have to manipulate him to get him to do what you need him to do. Your femininity will urge him, call him, drive him. We're so lost that we're destroying each other and we're praising each other for doing it because we've been programmed to believe that's how it's done. You know, I mean, everything, we put everything over our women as men. And I'm saying that collectively uh, as a general statement, not as that's what all black men do, because I don't do it in the men that I hang around and the men I call uh, companions and friends don't do that. But there are plenty out there and the narrative that's being pushed in the public, the narrative that the media is pushing, all of that stuff is saying that that's what we do. That's how we are. And it's got a lot of women believing that's how black men are. And so women are becoming more and more apt to move into that role, screw the black man. And then what we know for a fact, statistically speaking, the black woman is the least likely to get married out of rape. Now, while the media is gonna show you every black woman that chooses a black man, the truth of the matter is, out of all the women, uh, ethnic uh, groups and races in America, black women are the least likely to marry outside of their race. And despite what is presented by black men, 88% of our married men are married to black women. Uh, now there are some other dynamics that I'm not gonna get into that play into that, but we're not just all hauling ass to go marry somebody outside of our race, you know, and I've said it for years. You, I'm my that if you can't connect to my African roots, you can't connect to my blackness. If you don't have a part of a black experience that connect to that, you can't connect with me. And so I'm gonna love a black woman, whoever it is, however it is, whatever it is, that's gonna be me. That's just who I am. Um, it's almost like I'm moving backwards or giving up something to move to something else 
you know, I might look at somebody and say, man, she's nice looking or whatever. Uh, you might have some things going for them, for them, but there's something missing. And I want the fullness of the experience of loving and caring and producing progeny that are a representation of the power that I've created and the love that I created and the things that I've been able to do. That's what's important to me. And so I say this with love. We've got to get out of the pimpology mindset. We've got to get out of the black girl magic uh, mentality. We are going to have to really and truly come to an understanding of just how important respecting and loving one another is. I just left the gym and I'm going to tell you something that really blew my mind. And because people like brothers don't like it because brothers, we've been given this idea that we've got to stick together. It's us against them. No, it's not. We're all the same collective and we're operating independently of one another and it's destroying us. I just came out of gym and a lady pulled up and I was getting ready to get in my you know, get in my truck and a lady pulled up. A lady pulled up and said, hey, and you know, and I'm thinking, she thinks I'm somebody else. I say, how are you? And I said, okay, how are you? And she said, hey, I'm gonna talk to you. I said, well, I'm about to leave. She says, I know you, you saved my life. And I'm, I'm gonna try not to get emotional because this is why I do this. Uh, and sometimes you need to be reminded because sometimes you feel like what you're doing is thankless. Like you're just out there doing it and nobody cares. But she said, you saved my life. She says, one day I saw you were working in the Starbucks and I, that was the time I was using Starbucks at a satellite office. Um, and she said that you, you talked to me because I had this view of black men and I hated them. And you talked to me with, even after hearing how I felt about black men, you talked to me with such care and concern. And you told me why you guys behave the way you behave. And you told me that your greatest yearning as a black man is respect. She says, at first I didn't get it, but for some reason, the way you said it to me had so much care and concern and she said if you don't mind me saying love in it and it, it it made me have to carry it and and contemplate it and think about it and she said you saved my life I view men differently and now I can even pour into my young nephews because I don't want them to carry the anger that a lot of men are carrying and and and, and so much and so I told her hey look she said I, I inbox you um, and you know, I know you got a lot of people, stuff like that. And like, you know, I, I get so many inbox messages. If I don't know you and if it's not some kind of real context and I'm horrible on Instagram and that's what she was even, inbox. I'm horrible on responding to inboxes on Instagram. I've got to get better. But she says, so I gave her my card. I said, Hey, look, I would love to catch up. See how, how things are really going. Uh, with you, but I'm I'm grateful that you were able to share it with me, and it and it came to me at a time that I needed it. I needed to know that I've touched a life, and my whole thing is every day I wake up and it's like, hey man, if I leave this place and I've touched a life, my life has been worth it. My living hasn't been in vain. And when you look up and how many times I've heard that, I don't know how many times. I'm not talking about you changed my life. I'm talking about you saved my life. I, I've heard you changed my life, which is huge. You saved my life. And I'm going like, man, the magnitude of some of the things that people are sharing. And she shared a few other things. But the thing is, we are a powerful people when we work together, when we see the humanity in one another. And we don't allow them to paint us as animals and less than to one another. And when we don't allow them to create the narrative that we're enemies, there are some unbelievable things we can do. And I wanna encourage everybody that we've got some growing to do. We got some things we need to do. We got some healing to do. And it's gonna take a lot of understanding 
It's going to take a lot of understanding. You don't come out of this unscathed. It's too much that has happened. But I'm telling you, I choose love. I choose love and everything that's going on in my life. I choose love over hate. I choose love over anger and resentment and revenge and all this other stuff. And it's healing me. I'm challenging you to do that. As I get ready to get off of here, uh, I can't figure out where I want to go. But I uh, should need to go to the post office. It's too late. Uh, but as I get ready to get off of here, I want to really encourage you to support the work we do at the Odyssey Project. Um, so much work is needed. Um, there's so many more lives to be touched. Um, man, that was that made my day. Um, but I wanted, to, man, we got to get away from the pimp mindset that women are something to be handled, uh, something to be manipulated, something to be broken down. Uh, we are missing our point as men when we do that. Ladies, you got to get away from the idea that your greatest self is something you are able to accomplish without a man. Uh, working with a man, being with a man, being loved by a man, being covered by a man is not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of maturity. It's a sign of understanding self. I, I'm, I'm not my best without a woman by my side. I can do some extraordinary things. I've proven that. I've done that. But I'm telling you, it's nothing like having a woman by your side. Something that you are meant to cover and take care of. I mean, like, the biggest thing with my divorce was I felt like I lost what I needed to take care of. I, I need something direct and personal to take care of. Yeah, I got my kids, and that's that's keeping me going. It's keeping me like my kids and my grandkids. But that thing, you know, that, that the desire to care and take care of something and love something, when, when you connect with that, there's a whole different level, and we're missing it because we're operating on such a low frequency. We don't see it. But I'm out on that note. So I'm telling you, uh, show some love and support and support the work we're doing. The information is in the description box.